Hello, I'm Bob Trubshaw. I'd like to talk to you today about Foxton Locks. Those of you who live in Leicestershire or northern Northamptonshire, we will know this is a popular place to visit. Those of you who own canal boats will know about the complex arrangements of ten locks, built as two so-called staircases, each with five locks. However, just for a change, you're not going to hear much of my voice. Instead, you'll hear my maternal grandmother, Sarah. She grew up in the bottom lock cottage between about 1910 to 1913, and continued to live nearby until the mid-1920s. Sarah was the fifth of seven children. Her mother, Amelia, came from the Whittington family. Yes, the turn again, Dick Whittington. And her father, Frank Doran, looked after the horses. They were all living in part of Cranford Hall at Bedford, which is near Twickenham. The hall has long since been demolished. Sadly, Sarah's mother died while giving birth to her youngest sibling. So, at the age of six, Sarah was put on a train from Twickenham to Market Harbour, on her own, but travelling in the guard's compartment, and came to live with her grandparents. Her grandfather was the head lockkeeper at Foxton and lived at the bottom lock cottage. After successive transformations, this building is now the bigger of the pubs at the locks. These recordings were made in 1988, when Sarah was 83 years old. Her room was next to a busy corridor, so there's rather a lot of background noise. Uh, This photograph was taken around the same time. I remember seeing my mother in a coffin, because they didn't take them away in those days. They left them at the house, and we had a big house where the big gates, where the horses used to come in, in the yard, you see, and uh, the carriages. I can see that ever so plain. But uh, I remember seeing my mother in a coffin, and she was only 37 when she died. Mm. And I would only be, I wasn't uh, just turned five then. Yeah, so very because early. Nelly, our eldest sister, she partly looked after us, and an aunt. Mm. I don't know which aunt it was, but uh, she looked after us as much as she could, but we weren't looked after us as we should have been, you see. On Saturday nights, when I lived at Foxton Locks with my grandparents mm-hmm. and Sister Lily, we used, always used to go, uh, after tea, to Foxton, walk along the canal. Winter and summer we went, unless the weather was too bad for me to go, but anyway, they couldn't leave me behind, they had to take me with them, you Mm. see. Grandma, not grandfather, grandma, and uh, we always called her grandma, we never called her granny or anything like that. And uh, we used to go to one house where um, uh, they'd got one daughter, her name was Dolly, and her name was Dolly Cryer. We uh, used to go up to tea and get there. You see, it took about just under half an hour, I think, to go, about half an hour, quite a bit away. And uh, I used to sit in the corner, as good as gold, they said, with this rag doll. So all the toys I had, I remember having as a child, was a rag doll, which belonged to Dolly Cryer. I had to leave it there each week. I couldn't take it home with me. Mm. I had to leave it there and uh, in a little wooden cradle that somebody had made for her, you see. And I used to sit, we sat all evening playing with this rag doll. And uh, that amused me while the two grandmas, grandparents, uh, Dolly Cryer's mother, mm-hmm. and uh, they used, used to talk, you see. They used to such, such a talk. Well, I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. They took a bit of notice of me. They knew I'd be good with gold in the corner. And, uh, and then for their supper, they had bread and cheese and a bottle of stout. But in those days, I didn't know it was a bottle of stout, of course. I, um, and they used to, uh, that used to last all evening, the one bottle of stout, one each, bottle each. I can see that as plain as anything now. Well, Lily, she didn't stay with us. She went off round the village with the boys, you see, with the village boys, and with Dolly Cryer. And we did that, uh, and then we walked back at night, about nine o'clock. And... Uh, Sometimes a bit bad weather, be rain and snow, but we managed it. And uh, in the dark, no lights. No, no. And the Grandma used to hold my hand ever so tight. Oh, I can feel her hand there, you know. <laughs> and ever so tight. Was she on the towpath? Still, yeah, she was be on the towpath, mm-hmm. and she prayed I'd fall in. I was on the inside, of course. Right. And Lily that side. 
and uh, we had looked forward to that Saturday nights. That was our only sort of a little bit of recreation that we had. Mm. And uh, if you can call it recreation, but to us it was mm. lovely. Well, to me it was anyway. Sunday school treat once a year, yeah. and they used to congregate under this big cedar tree, and the people that lived in this big house, their name was Haddon. I can remember that name. They used to throw, throw us nuts as though we were something in a cave. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. I, I never moved. I, from, oh, my brothers, from where we sat on this lawn, we were too scared to move. It was nuts and cakes and all sorts of things for us. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, one year, I remember, a lady came on the Monday. It was on a Sunday, a Saturday or Sunday we had this treat. And there were races for us. Oh, yes. Got them down the lawns, you see, just the lawns. And uh, we didn't move. And we were too scared. And uh, it's silly to bring children up like that, isn't mm. it? Being scared of their own shadow, almost. <laughs> The inclined plane was already out of use by the time Sarah arrived. Although built at great expense in an attempt to overcome the shortage of water feeding the locks, it was expensive to run. Three men were needed to operate it, and the boiler needed to be kept in steam all day. There simply weren't enough boats, they were mostly carrying coal and timber, to offset the operating costs. Eventually, around 1919, it was steadily dismantled. My grandparents... They were head keepers of Fox and the Locks, you mm -hmm. see. And uh, we used to have, every so often, they'd have a board meeting. Well, I was fascinated with these board meetings because all these men, well, several men, used to come and they had a big room at the top called the boardroom mm -hmm. and it had a beautiful organ in it. Grandfather used to play the organ when he got the time. I can remember that. And, uh, and then uh, grandmother used my grandmother used to get the tea dinners and teas for these men when yes, really. they came for a board meeting yeah, quite elaborate and uh, I know then they had tin fruit for their tea my sister and I used to hope they would leave a little of this fruit so we could have a taste you see and that was a highlight <laughs> uh, for us it was yes. and uh, we didn't get tin fruit in those days not very often no. and uh, well then uh, we hadn't got to disturb him, what disturbed them while they were at this meeting. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. But it was all part the boardroom was almost attached to the house then, was it? Was it the upstairs part of it? was upstairs. From where room. you lived? Yes, yeah, where we lived. The big house at the bottom, very yeah. big house it was. Yeah. And it was a queer shape though. There was two lots of stairs. There was, a, the out, there was an outer door mm -hmm. at the top of the, where this boardroom was. They had their own door to get yeah, their own stairs. in and out there. Yeah. They didn't come to our part. Oh, so it was just attached to it. it was, yeah. Yes, they didn't come to our part. Mm -hmm. of, and then there were some stairs down below. Mm -hmm. Went down in the dark almost to these stairs. <laughs> and uh, my bedroom, my sister's bedroom, was on the ground, on ground level. It was a queer shaped house. And she used to frighten me to death at night, you know, she was strong and healthy and she frightened me, <laughs> saying burglars and all sorts were going to get in. But what I loved boat, most was the boats. Mm. I, used to, I was fascinated with the boats and that they had uh, big uh, cans for the drinking water. They didn't call them buckets, they were mm. cans because they got a half lid. Oh, yes. And uh, yes. they were gaily painted, all the colours were beautiful. And uh, they used to come through the back way, straight through the uh, back way of our house, straight through into the yard where the pump was to get their, their fresh water and eggs. We used to let them have eggs as well. Well, I was fascinated with these uh, boat people and that they were all very nice, spotlessly clean. They were, and they used to bring their children mm. sometimes. So, so did you get to know the children? If you're yes, we age? got to know the children, yes. yes. Father's brother lived in the top block. Mm -hmm. The top house at the oh, top. What his name was? Uh, George. That's George Darren. George Darren, yes. He lived in the, with his family. There was mm -hmm. co more cousins up there at the top mm -hmm. lock. Oh, would be fair. Yes. And uh, there was a big garden at the side of the locks. They grew everything in that. Well, my grandfather had a garden as well, away from the house, a little way away from the house. And uh, we grew everything. We didn't mm -hmm. have to buy much, you see. It, when he was a young man, so I was told. He was climbing an apple tree, because he mm. would if he was... And, of course, in those days, there wasn't the facilities for... No medical facilities, not the same as now. Mm. And uh, he fell out of the apple tree, you see, mm. and it broke his leg. Mm. And it, I think it turned gangrene, and mm. he had to have it off. Mm. But he got about ever so quickly, he had a crutch, 
and uh, under his arm. Mm. He didn't have an artificial leg. I, I think he'd got one, but he wouldn't use it. Yes. And uh, he got about quickly with his crutch. He used to go like lightning. Mm. He could get up and down the stairs with it. He was ever so handy like that. He was at the top locks, locks, and he could get across those locks like lightning. Along yeah, the top of the Very lock. narrow. Platform. Only very narrow they are, yes. you know. And he used to go along like, I didn't walk across, Lily did, my sister, she used to walk across, but not me, I no, was too mm. scared. Lily, who was two years older than Sarah, was already at Foxton and helping out with the grandparents' small holding. The, that uh, bottom lock, it was the lawn, and it was a, a big, kept from the water with mm. a great big, thick piece of wood, oh, you know, yes. properly made to bank. keep the water back. Yeah. Well, we could sit on that and dangle our feet, you see, and sit on the lawn and this big Good piece wood. of wood and uh, dangle our legs over. Well, we were sitting there one day and she said something to me I didn't like and I said, go on, go in. <laughs> How deep was it? Well, it was near the little boat house because uh, yeah. they had a shelter for the pleasure boat, but they didn't have a yes. pleasure boat, but there was a little shelter and uh, I could see it now. <laughs> I didn't stop seeking out. I thought she would get a good eye and she pushed her in. But she was a real sport. She didn't say I pushed her in, she said she fell in. Oh. Yeah, so I thought I was very grand granddaughter, wasn't it? <laughs> you said you, you were going to tell me about the Maypole as well. Oh yes, about the Maypole. That was Foxton Village, mm. that was. And once a year, begin, the first uh, day of May was the Maypole Day, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, May Day, we called it. Day, yeah. Well, and bring out the Maypole and all these coloured ribbons, you see, mm -hmm. and they'd select six boys and six girls to dance around the maypole, and we had to be dressed up. Most of the girls were in white, you see, mm -hmm. then. Traditional, yeah. Yes. We would do fancy patterns, you see, around mm -hmm. the maypole. Mm -hmm. They were so pretty yeah, when it's it done. Yes, I saw Yes, but you've seen pictures of it. Right. Uh, then in the evening, some of the parents would be invited, and if it was fine, to the playground. They got a big play playground at that school. Mm -hmm. Foxton School. So the maypole was in the school, was it? Yes, but it found, if it was fine, we danced in outside. Mm -hmm. The parents could come and see us dance around mm -hmm. it, you see, at night. A few of them did, those that wanted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's but, tradition, mm -hmm. you see. It, I suppose they still do, I don't know, in the Some villages. Do. Yes, it's still there. Yes, I expect they do. So you were actually doing the dancing for Yes, I, I, I did a bit of dancing around the maypole. Oh, I loved it. I oh, thought it was lovely. See these patterns weaving around the maypole, you see. And uh, then when we moved to Clipston, they had a maypole, but they didn't have the ribbons. We went round the village with it, all dressed up in dolls and flowers. Mm. And I had two lovely dolls. We had a rich aunt in Scotland. And she sent Lily and I a lovely doll each then. And, but Lily didn't want her, she gave hers to me, you see. And I could put it, put them on the maypole once a year. Didn't have them for long, mm. before I was 13 and had to leave them at home, you see. But anyway, um, we um, dressed up the maypole with these dolls and, and I had one with a wax face. Well, I had mm. to cover its face because if it was sunny, you see, the wax would have melted it. And one or two more had wax dolls and I had mm. to cover them up. And uh, but you see, uh, that's funny because you don't hear of those now. No, no, no. Those have gone. Uh, and then, um, and then we in the evening uh, we had a tea as well. Then yeah. children did had a tea. I don't know where we had it. Whether we had it in the school or where, but we had a tea, and uh, we could uh, then take the dolls home. Then you see, and the flowers that were decorated up with. <laughs> In those days, I was called Dorothy. I wasn't called Sarah. Never told anybody my name was Sarah either. Went the name of Dorothy, you see. I can tell you that. Yeah, I say, how did you get called Dorothy? It's all to do with a cow or a calf, isn't it? Um, oh, no, it was a horse. A horse? A horse. Oh. Well, no, it was Dolly at first, you yes. see. This was when I was much younger. Yeah. Dad went out to buy a horse. I think it was when we were in London. Oh, he went out to buy a horse, and when he came home, they told him, He'd got another little daughter, so he said, oh, I've got two dollies now, have I? The horse's name was Dolly, so I got named after the horse. <laughs> and he said, I was always Dolly till I grew up, and I mm. wouldn't be Dolly, I said it was Dorothy. Yes. And even at school, I, I put my name down as Dorothy, which I shouldn't have done, really, but I didn't know any better then. Mm. And uh, I was never Sarah, but... Sarah moved to Foxton in 1910. Around 1913, her father married again, 
and the family moved to Clipston in Northamptonshire. Dorothy, as Sarah was known then, did not get on well with her stepmother. Uh, Once she left school in 1917, at the age of 13, she worked and lived at a farm on the Lawton Hills, right at the south of Leicestershire. Although she worked hard for the farmer and his wife, her memories of those years are happy ones, and I plan on making another video about her time there. In 1921, at the age of 17, Dorothy became a nanny to the two daughters of a fairly wealthy industrialist, so she moved to the Stonigat district of Leicester. While living there, she met her future husband, Frank, and around 1927, Dorothy and Frank moved to Glen Gorse, to the south of Leicester, and sometime in the 1930s, to Bainbridge Road in Bronston, where she brought up my mother, Diana, and her son, Derek. In her mid-70s, Sarah moved one more time to Kibworth Court in Kibworth Beecham. She died there peacefully early in 1997 at the age of 92.